Welcome to the Lockdown Economy, a series of interviews by the think tank Alter Contacts, where the real entrepreneurs share their insights. My name is Yulia Skupchenko, and today my guest is Claudia Deacon, the owner of Plant Based Sushi, the first sushi, vegan sushi restaurant in the Netherlands. Hello, Claudia, how are you? Hey, thank you so much for having me. I'm very good today. Um, I'm looking forward to our conversation. And where are you at the moment? Uh, I'm in Amsterdam. I'm in the east of Amsterdam, I'm actually on a houseboat, which is quite cool, but only temporarily. But um, yeah, in Amsterdam. Well, that's, that's quite a good place for a lockdown. I'm very curious how it feels <laughs> there. But um, let me ask you, what, uh, what is your business? Uh, how did you start it? How long ago did you start it? And in general, what can you tell me about it? Cool. Um, so I'm the owner of Plant Based Sushi. As you mentioned, we're a vegan sushi restaurant in Amsterdam. Uh, we were we very luckily opened on the 2nd of January this year in Amsterdam West. And uh, it was a very good January and February and March. And then unfortunately we were locked. Uh, we had to go into lockdown due to Corona. Um, but we, uh, so we sell vegan sushi, it's only vegan sushi, and our idea is that we don't replicate fish. We really show that sushi can be a completely different meal, and you don't need fish or a fish alternative to make sushi work. Um, so that's how we stay kind of unique within the, within the market, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm very curious how you come up with the, with the recipes for the uh, alternative sushi. And I guess we're going to talk a bit more about the, all of this in, in the course of the interview. But uh, how did you feel when the lockdown happened? You were the restaurant owner and it was probably one of the most hard hit industries. Um, so tell me, what was your first reaction? How did you come out of it? <laughs> um, I must say we were, it was like, I can honestly recall the exact moment when it happened. We were about to open for service. We already had full staff there, everything ready. And then we were told we had to close within 30 minutes. And uh, it was, it was pretty tough. I mean, pretty devastating, I would say. Um, we were all pretty upset as a, a as a company and you know an organization but the um it was also a good moment for us to all come together and sort of like just try and you know be together as a community in this moment um but it i mean it was very upsetting and also so so recently like we were so enthusiastic and things were going so well and then suddenly then you're told you kind of feel helpless or something or powerless in that moment because you're suddenly it's not anything you can do right it's just you're being told, like, I think as an entrepreneur, you're more, you're inclined to do things because you're not told to do it or because you're set, you're like coming up with your own way to do things. But now you're told, okay, no, nice. You have a business, but you can't do it anymore. So it was pretty upsetting, but you know, we had to make do with what we could. So, yeah. And so what was the reaction of the, of your team, of the people who you just hired or of the people who were there with you creating the recipes uh, and making the thing happen? I'm sure you had supporters along the way. Exactly. So um, we, I mean, we have quite a, a big team at this moment. Well, it's reduced slightly, but at that moment it was quite a big team. And um, I would say we were all a little, bit, a little bit concerned and we didn't know what to expect. And then it was very shocking and confronting that now suddenly you have to close. Um, so in general, we were pretty upset. Um, but I think it also, I mean, it also motivated us to move into deliveries and see what we could do now that we were no longer a restaurant. So I think one or two of us were also a little bit relieved that we could have one night where we got home early and could get full eight hours sleep because we were all a little bit tired from being so busy but um, no but I think I mean it, it was an upsetting moment but we all came together and that was nice so yeah yeah I remember your presentation uh, back at Team Academy uh, of where you shared that you practically you know you start your day there you finish your day there you practically <laughs> have nights over there just to prepare everything to to run and it, it must be you know and you were really caught like in that in that uh, moment of when you just increase the speed and um, exactly. so on the bright side um, how did you um, react to that with action so you said something about delivery what else did you do on the business front during the lockout lockdown 
Um, so we went from, we, it took about two, uh, we started with deliveries almost directly, like the, it was a Sunday when we were told to close, the Monday we were already uh, in the kitchen trying to do deliveries. At that moment we were uh, very focused on uh, using platforms like Uber and Taste, Taste Resort and Deliveroo. Um, however, we realized that actually if we did our own deliveries, then perhaps we could get more orders in. I've gone very bright. And um, yeah, it's the, okay. I'm sure. I'm sure people will understand. If you're so, on the boat, you can control I'm so sorry. how the sun. Is. No, no, it's I'm, okay. Yeah. So you you uh, reversed from the Uber deliveries into your own deliveries. Exactly. Yeah. So we started. Um, we we first tried like the Uber and Taste the Zork for um, about the first week we were there. But it's also, I, you know, that as a concept is quite um, it's quite difficult because you're then already in the restaurant and then like six o'clock comes or five o'clock comes and the restaurant is then open online. But then you're not sure if you'll get deliveries directly or orders directly. So it's very much like you're already and you're excited and then you're not sure if anything will happen so we wanted to see if we could change this you know we also didn't want we were also very cautious of like we didn't want staff to get sick or be alone at the restaurant or you know these kind of things during this uh, uncertain time so we um we changed within two weeks we had basically set up our own delivery service so we were taking orders ourselves and doing deliveries ourselves and uh, this made a big difference in our sales as I mean the third parties also take a share of your um, of the revenue understandably but um, we also felt that then people our customers were more enthusiastic because they were buying from us you know and they could they would whatsapp or they would order and then they speak to me or they speak to one of our uh, colleagues so then it it definitely helped us stay um stay very active during this time so that was that was an exciting move so basically the delivery became your uh, your business stream and uh, you you chose uh, the the self delivery rather than than the third parties and it sounds uh, i haven't looked into it but it does sound like for me as a customer, it would make a difference if I can just WhatsApp you and say what I want, rather than going through Taos Bizork, which has a thousand of choices and maybe I'll get lost in the middle of the choosing process, right? That's the um, thing. yeah. So uh, were there anything else, was there anything else that you, or uh, any other actions uh, that you took on maybe to some challenges with protecting the employees from getting ill or uh, some reorganization or maybe uh, some interpersonal things that you you had to deal with that we experienced so um I must say there was because the nature of the the business changed so fast there was a lot of adjusting that had to happen and a lot of like things that I don't know automatically happened but couldn't really be discussed it was almost like we were all just running and then we had to try figure out like where we're running to and who's running with us, you know, in a very short space of time. While also, you know, this is the thing about having a restaurant is that it's, you know, every day you have customers. So it's not like we have a break to, we don't have like a weekend off where we can quickly regroup and think about plans or strategies, but we, um, you know, we always had to be on point. So this caused some um, into, yeah, interpersonal like conflicts, of course, but, I think it was also due to, you know, it's a difficult time and everyone's feeling a bit nervous because of the whole Corona thing. So um, we had to, I, I, of course, at this moment, then communication became even more important than it is usually. We had to even like, I mean, you're going from knowing people professionally to knowing them personally now as well, because we're all a little bit anxious. So then you really had to we really had to focus on like checking in with each other and making sure we're feeling well, you know, and healthy. And then also taking these things seriously. Like if someone was not well, then we really had to, they couldn't be in for two weeks and then you have to compensate for that. Um, so that was, it was quite an interesting uh, transition, but I actually think it's made us all closer now as a team because we all know each other far better and we work through this difficult time together. Um, so I think that was the biggest like change that we noticed, you know, in this during this time. So yeah. And it's nice to know that there is some positive coming out of it. I mean, coming closer together as a team uh, will probably be a great asset going forward in the business. Um, exactly. And which brings me to my next question. 
uh, how is your business doing now? So the lockdown has been lifted and the restaurants are sort of back in business with some limitations. So what are those limitations for you and what, how are you uh, making them, uh, how are you making the most of them? How do you make it work? So um, we chose not to open on the 1st of June. Uh, we wanted to give it a little bit more time to see how everything else pans out, um, how, it's, how it works currently with all the restaurants. Um, we were also, uh, yeah, we just wanted to take it a bit slow at the beginning to just, we sort of like ran into delivery so fast and got everything running so fast that it and really like, I mean, it saved the business. I mean, it, we wouldn't, we wouldn't we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for like just switching so fast and being able to do our own deliveries um, and moving quickly there so we decided to take it a bit slower now when everything opens up again uh, we're definitely feeling like the uh, I, the financial pressure is quite high at this moment um, although we did manage to make like we're still profitable so that's good but it's still very tight and uh, you know these things have like other effects besides uh, financial of course so the um, but at this moment so restaurants are not open or well, opening um, and we're going to be opening next weekend um, on the 27th of uh, June and um, we found a super cool location it has like outdoor terrace and everything so and we really wanted to we also took our time in finding a new location because we wanted this like outdoor aspect where we could you know everyone can sit outside in the sun of course summer coming now and um yeah we're looking at how to ensure that it's all corona safe and everything but um this is also like yeah you also have to consider like with the whole experience of your restaurant how are you going to ensure it's still like the plant-based sushi experience if you know you have to make sure everyone sanitizes, sanitizes their hands when they walk in and that everyone has a contact person, you know. So we're figuring these things out, but I think uh, we're really looking forward to opening. I've really been missing all the customers. So uh, looking forward to seeing everyone again. So yeah. Well, that, that's really great. I, I do hope that uh, despite all the regulations and despite the fact that, you know, uh, the atmosphere takes away uh, a little bit from the charm of the restaurant, potential charm. Um, I'm sure that you know you have a lovely concept of of the of the restaurant of the proposition. So, have you uh, spoken to any of your customers in during the lockdown or maybe after to figure out where it's the best location, what they would like to do, what they would like to receive from you? Yes, so um, so that was also nice. So uh, I was also doing deliveries myself during this time. Of course, everyone was doing deliveries during this time. So um, and that was really nice. And that you know, it's it, the nice thing about the restaurant industry is that you get to see all your customers and you get to see how happy you make them. And then just bringing food to their door, and then they're like there, and they've been looking forward to it the whole day. And now finally, they're getting this nice meal. You know, they've been working the whole day. Um, and a lot of them, I think, were very, you know, quite nervous about the whole situation, but also felt very trapped and wanted to go out and wanted to, you know, continue with their regular lives, but now felt like, okay, well, then I'll just order, you know, every day or something. <laughs> so, uh, so I think that was, that was quite interesting. Um, I, I see people are, are trying to adjust back to now we can go out to restaurants, but I think it's quite a slow adjustment. I think people have also realized that they can do other things besides go to a restaurant that as we had to during lockdown, which is unfortunate for us, of course. But um, yeah, but I think, I, I think people were really scared during this time. And now I think everyone's sort of getting back to normal and enjoying it again. So yeah. Yeah, and, and everyone is craving uh, to go out, I'm sure. E even if maybe not re as regularly as before, I'm sure uh, they would want to go out at least once. And if you were their preferred choice, uh, <laughs> there's no doubt where they're going to go. Uh, exactly. Were there any customers that maybe you delivered to more than once? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> yeah, there were a couple. Actually, we had one. Um, how you could, how you would order is that you could order like pre-order as well. And we had um, one or two customers who pretty much just said, "You can bring me food every day." So <laughs> that was <laughs> that was very nice. Uh, we really appreciated that. That makes a big difference to us and our team. Uh, but definitely we found that a lot of our order, a lot of the times we were going to the same places each week. So yeah, that's really nice. You know. 
Yeah, it is. And I think we haven't really given uh, enough uh, enough time to uh, to the concept of your sushi. And I would like, uh, before we finish, I would like still uh, for you to tell a bit more about what it is the plant made sushi and you know maybe you have a pitch that you want to share yes of course i'm always happy to share about this um so basically what we believe as a restaurant is that um once you remove fish from the sushi you're no longer limited to flavors that only complement fish i mean if you think about regular sushi there are only a few flavors that can go with like for example a you know good raw salmon or raw tuna you know so uh, if you remove this fish now, then you're suddenly not limited to it. So then you can do absolutely anything in the sushi. Like, for example, I mean, one of our rolls has onion budgie in it. And I mean, that's unheard of for in sushi, right? But it just works so well. I mean, sushi for us is a platform to represent all these different flavors you can show and different cultures you can show in the sushi. We really focus on like the uh, coloring the rice so we use like all these natural dyes for example we use beetroot and one of the right the, the one of the rice and then it goes bright pink um, and it looks so cool and we use algae in a different kind a different role so it goes blue actually which is also strange to have blue food but uh, we really want to show that you can have an enjoyable uh, like sushi which like sushi based meal which isn't uh you know which is cruelty free and no and no um additional effects of like for the environment these kind of things um so that's really our our mission and we really try we really don't replicate fish we avoid these like the um the fake fish that you get because we think when you know it's you're going to get so close but it's never going to be fish so why, I mean, why should we? Let's just try to do something completely different, you know, and use it as, as a platform to show, like, we're a very diverse team, so everyone's different cultures come into the whole, um, into the mix of the whole menu. So that's what we do. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a brilliant alternative uh, for somebody who's looking for a healthy snack or well, a healthy meal. It's not a snack, right? Uh, <laughs> meal, um, yes. It could be, it could be. Um, but I did try it at that, uh, at that event where you catered um, for the Team Academy and it was delicious and it did look quite amazing. So, and I saw that there was <laughs> a big you. success among all of the participants. So I, I recommend it to whoever is watching to try <laughs> and who is in Amsterdam and Netherlands to try it for sure. Thank you. Um, so thank you very much, Claudia. Is it would would there be anything else you'd like to share with the viewers? Um, thank you very much. Yes, definitely. Um, we are opening on the twenty seventh of June. Uh, we'll be in East now. We haven't tried East before, but we're very excited about it. We have a huge terrace, which is super cool. Um, we'll only be open Friday, Saturday, Sunday for now, but looking to open more days as we start growing. Uh, definitely give us a follow or a like on Instagram with plantbasedsushi.eu or Facebook is just plantbasedsushi. Um, and I'm really enthusiastic to see everyone again and to welcome you to the restaurant. And of course, would love if you could come try our sushi, you know, describing it as just doesn't do it justice you have to try it for yourself great thank great thank you claudia and uh yeah indeed for everyone who's in amsterdam and who hasn't tried uh, the uh, plant-based sushi and who haven't been to to amsterdam east i highly recommend that area of town is beautiful is uh, vibrant i hope uh, the lockdown didn't change it much um or change it only for the best so thank you to everyone who joined us today um if you want to contact Claudia, um, uh, you can find her information in the text below the video with all the links to the restaurant and the delivery, I'm sure. Um, I invite you to like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to our channel. In the coming weeks, we're going to have many more insights to share with you. So stay tuned. Bye.